What are your pet peeves in terms of when people are approaching you? Like, what are some things not to do to try to get your attention? I just came back from a pitch session in Leipzig, Germany, and I had a, a meeting with a filmmaker who was pitching me a project and said, and the first thing she said to me was, I don't know your series, but I really think you're going to like this yeah. film. Oh, yeah. no. Then don't talk to me. So <laughs> that, that, that's probably the worst thing you can do. Apart from that, I'll listen to almost anything. <laughs> I don't like when people get mad at me for, you know, not responding or, you know, they call me and they just sort of accuse me of, like, not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. It really upsets me because I feel like I don't, I do have other stuff to do, you know, and I have a lot going on. So, and it happens more than you would think. People get really mad and they want an answer and they want an answer right away. And I say, you know, sometimes I say, you know what, if you need an answer right now, well, then the answer is going to have to be no. You know, so don't do that. Don't don't like take me on because. Yeah. <laughs> yes, don't yeah. take on Molly Thompson. Right? Don't. You shouldn't. <laughs> I would just say if you're talking to one of us, just keep talking to one of us because that's where it gets really confusing with us. When you're submitting to us, it's just a lot easier to stick with one person and know that the team is well aware of your project. When I first started at POV in, in 99, we were getting about 400 submissions a year, and now we get about 1,000. The quality is not parallel to that, you know, that trend <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so you know, just because everyone has a piece, you know, pencil and a piece of paper doesn't make them all you know, Tolstoy. Um, uh, but, but, but there are, I think it's great. I think it's actually really exciting. One page, just give me a quick overview, and then I'll look at the material. And if I want anything else, then I'll. We'll come back to you. I kind of feel like a little bit longer than that, just for, for me to get a sense of the tone and the, and the ambition for the project. But I definitely don't think uh, anybody should be writing treatments that are longer than about seven pages, you know. I think for us, it's really about what you have on, on video. Um, Sheila, like notoriously, will never read a treatment. So it's, <laughs> it's really hard to pitch us on paper. And I think, you know, to Simon's point, the fact that we're getting thousands of submissions a year, I think you really have, as a, you know, a new filmmaker or a filmmaker who's trying to break into a place like, you know, CNN, HBO, a &E, POV, I think you need to really demonstrate what do you have that's different. It's really hard for us, unless you have Monica Lewinsky and you want to do a document, you have access to her, it's really hard for us to fund anything off of a treatment. There's actually an incredibly high bar for certain films that you would think would be a no-brainer at CNN. So oftentimes, if somebody walks in the door or somebody pitches a film that is a very compelling, provocative, strong story within a subject matter like environment or healthcare or whatever it might be, that, that is something that we probably struggle with to engage an audience on uh, in many cases. I think that that seems to be much easier internally than, you know, a subject revolving around coverage that like CNN won multiple awards for, whatever it might be. We really need to promote our documentaries and we hustle very hard along with our publicists to do it. So if you're pitching something that we've just programmed, you know, in the past six months or the past year, it's just we know, we just know we can, we're not going to get press for it because it's very hard to go back to the same writers and say, Oh, we have another film on the Arab Spring. But I think it's really important to just know the overall marketplace as well. Like know that there's know the films that were nominated last year for an Oscar and I think it's hard to pitch a project that's on one of those subjects necessarily. I had that for all those to me reasons. recently where somebody came up to me and they pitched me something and I was like, Does he seriously not know that there was a film that was nominated for an Oscar <laughs> last year on that same you know, and I just thought I couldn't imagine that he did and I didn't want to I was uh, too embarrassed to point it out to him, but <laughs> After Murder Ball, you know, a lot of people came to us with their um, disabled people athletic movies that they Oof. wanted to make, but because they thought, oh, that's the place where you make those movies, and it's not. You know, we made our Murder Ball, yeah. and after we made Jesus Camp, like everybody thought we were the destination for like, you know, the fundamentalist Christian films, and it's like, no, I, we made that film, and we're I, I, we do not have an axe to grind against fundamentalist Christians, yeah. so we're not going to make that film again. I think that the idea that there are more cameras in the hands of more people in different forms around the world is a very good thing. I mean, I think that you have access into countries, into revolutions, into demonstrations that you would never have been able to capture in another form. And so is it the most ideal form of footage? No. But, you know, if that's the only way for us to get inside a particular place in Burma or Myanmar or whatever, 
you know, I think then that's important. We rarely like to put celebrities in documentaries unless it happens to be a film about them for whatever reason. And I know of late HBO seems to be doing a lot of kind of well-known um, biographies and stuff like that. But, but typically with our issue films, I think it helps if there's a celebrity who is attached to a particular issue or cause that, you know, if you have this great subject, you know, Gasland's a great example. Josh Fox did Gasland. I mean, he's become a little bit of a celebrity himself. But there's all sorts of people like Mark Ruffalo and, you know, people who are really behind the issue. And I think that's where you can use celebrity to help get your film out there and to help promote the issues that you care about and that those celebrities care about. But I think it's, I'm just not, I'm not necessarily a fan of watching celebrities go to Africa and stuff like that. I'm allergic to celebrities in films, so, um, you know, that's that, not, I'm, I would I'm say I'm allergic to kind of celebrity journalism in that sense. I feel like uh, it's unnecessary. I think if a story's strong enough or an issue is strong enough, it should drive the film as it is. But you know, to Sarah's point, I mean, I don't, in, I don't mind uh, a celebrity involvement kind of where they're not the actual talent within the film, and if you can call it that. But, you know, I don't mind that Matt Damon voiced over Inside Job. I think that that's fine. I don't mind, you know, even in Girl Rising, we have a lot of well-known actresses that are voicing over certain films. I think that in that case, it, it tends to bring, you know, they did a really wonderful voice performance that brought to life a story, you know. So I'm okay with that. It's just... It's films like Half the Sky, and not to get myself into too much trouble, but you know, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily believe that you always need George Clooney to tell you about Sudan. I think that you can figure out know. other yeah. ways. Well, to I mean, I, I think I do personally, but yeah, <laughs> I know. we like, all we up, all like wait. George Clooney. But I, but what I think is great about everybody who's who's up here, and just to like give ourselves a little kudos up here, is that like we we compete in such celebrity environments that. Like the great thing about documentaries, and we struggle with this at HBO all the time, because yeah, it's like people want to watch celebrities, but I think it's great that people like yourselves and filmmakers can give just the average, average, the ordinary person a voice if their story is worth telling. And I think that's what's really great about what all of us do. And like, there just aren't any other places <laughs> right now where you could do that. So I guess that's why we always have like such a strong, violent reaction when we see somebody famous going to Africa or somewhere else because you just feel like, you know what, like they just, they're there and they're doing a good thing and they're bringing attention to the issue, but what's more important is for people to realize what that the people they're going to visit are actually experiencing.